so today Sunday I've been um, working on this which is you may have seen it stuck on the uh, design board for a while it goes all the way back there as well it's quite it's all pinned on so I'm not going to unpin it and so I've been uh, working on this a, a fair bit which is Agnes's um, quilt for when she comes to stay with grandma in a few years time and they're all in these lovely blues and greens and a few sort of lovely sort of purpley ones and they're all going to sort of move like the sea <laughs> I need this next bit so I'll lift it up for you because it goes all the way up here now oh, all the way up here and all the way down here again what I'm and now what I've done is I've sewn all of these long strips now these are easy to sew that one alongside it where it's supposed to be which is right there and when you look at it close up there, you shouldn't be able to see the stitches on the front. It makes it really nice and neat. You've seen this many times. This is Agnes's quilt. Okay, let's see where did I leave this. There I am. There. My hexagons here, and I've got loads of them. Really loads. A big box full. And what I'll do is I'll take these and stick them on here with a pin until I like how they look. I'm loving making this. I really am loving making it. Uh, as I say, I've got this um, box here that's full of uh, templates. It's a bit like painting. Hello YouTube friends, I'm going to talk to you today about Agnes's quilt which is on the board behind me here. But first of all I hope you enjoyed seeing all those little clips of the very beginnings of Agnes's quilt. Now Agnes is my granddaughter and she's two and a half and I started to think about making this quilt when she was a tiny baby. And the idea for it would be like a little cot cover, but she grew and the ideas for the quilt grew. And I'm really pleased they did because I'm now making this to be a single bed size quilt, which I hope she'll be able to use when she comes to stay at grandma's. And also all of her life, she can take this to university with her, if that's what she wants to do. She can use this quilt uh, as she grows and grows. Now. It's been a long time getting it to this point, I know. It's been quite frustrating watching this journey unfolding. But I have done lots of other things in between times and that's how I like to work. I like to pick something up, spend a little bit of time on it and then get interested in some knitting or spinning or a bit of gardening or whatever. But there comes a point, doesn't there, when something has to be finished. Now this quilt is nowhere near finished, but the quilt top is nearly finished. I kept pinning it up onto the board and looking at it and thinking it's not quite big enough yet and my reasoning for that was I explained this in a video in fact I'm going to leave a playlist link on the end card which will have all the videos that talk about this quilt uh, right from its early beginnings right through to this one today and I explain in one of them the whole idea about how I'm going to decide when this thing's the right size uh, to do with the golden ratio. Now I explain it in detail in one of the videos um, back there. So do check that out. But the golden ratio is something that I learned about from a good friend of mine, Sarah, a few years ago, who was making a quilt. And uh, she said, I'm using these dimensions because then it will just look right. So I measured the width of this quilt 
and then I put the that width into the formula which calculates then how wide it needs to be and by doing that it told me that I needed it to be 10 inches longer in order to fit in with this lovely ratio. Now I designed 10 more inches I'm, I'm designing it out from this end here and so I put these three rows on here plus one more and in the end there were six more rows that needed to go on here to make this into an extra 10 inches. These are inch hexagons and so I've stitched together three of them. They will fit here and that gets sewn on there. That last one I did. I want to show you how I keep track when I've designed a piece, how I keep track of that. I've probably mentioned this before as well. But I use these smaller pieces of polystyrene to transfer the pieces onto. But I want to show you how, without having a design board or without having great big pieces of polystyrene clogging up your house, I want to show you how you can make this project and keep track of the design that you've made in your project. In this um, box beside me I've got all the hexagons, the paper hexagons, I've got a few more of the uh, fabric templates that I need and I've got a few sewn hexagons here. Now I'm not going to need any of these because I've finished designing the whole thing. It's pinned up on these boards here. So when I say um, how I'm going to show you how to design it. It's terribly simple. If you wanted to make this project for something that you could take away and stitch when you were away on holiday or you know sitting on the train or doing whatever, you can take a small amount of these hexagons with you or any uh, English paper piece shape with you to stitch together. Here's how I'm going to show you how to keep track of them. Let's just say that that's your quick layout. This will work for any size, a tiny thing or a really massive quilt like the one I have behind me. Now I like to pin those up so that I can see them and then pick them off and sew them together. But you can also do it this way. So choose a nice thick felt pen and then I assign a letter to each row. So this is A here, this is B here and this is C. Now you can carry on and use the whole alphabet. Uh, that will uh, it'll work perfectly. So then if you turn all your pieces over in the design that you want them, you can see what I'm going to do, can't you? So this is A1, B1, C1. A2, A3, A4, B2, B3, B4, B5, C1, etc. C, no, C2, sorry. C2, C3, C4. Now, in order to know, this is a, an extra little tiny thing that I do. In order to know uh, which is um, the, the hexagon that's going to be lower than, so at, at this point, A is down here, B is up here. I then do an arrow pointing down and an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down so that I can see that this one needs to be stitched above this one. And then I can get this now put the whole thing in my bag like that, take along a needle and some thread and I can find those quite easily and put them together when I'm on the train <laughs> or wherever I am and then make that panel exactly the right size. I think that should make sense. It's quite obvious what I'm doing. So that's it. That's your little kit to take with you to do a bit of stitching and then stitch the bigger pieces together. Years ago I made that quilt, that, uh, that um, panel that I've showed you before, which is the big um, 
map of the British Isles and that one, I did that one when I was on trains and visiting my parents and doing all of those things because it was a number of years ago and I numbered them all like this and I managed to piece the whole thing together in parts and then stitch them together. But with this one it's not been travelling anywhere. <laughs> the finishing line is in sight for this quilt top and I'm stitching the last few strips of Agnes's quilt together and then I'll be able to stitch these six runs here onto the main piece and we'll be able to see the whole finished thing. Now people ask me questions every time I'm, I talk about this quilt people ask me questions about it and the main couple are do you leave the papers in while you're working it because these are basted onto papers these shapes here and yes I do. Uh, I've explained this before but I'll tell you, I'll tell you again here. I leave the papers in my, my piece of uh, English paper pieced work to the end. With the papers in the whole piece has got a sort of strength and integrity to it and if you take the papers out but just leave the papers in the bit that you're working then it, it drags unevenly, especially in a massive piece like this one. And so I like to leave the papers in to keep all the stitches, um, keep their integrity going, and then I'm going to take the papers out. Now, when I take the papers out of this quilt top, there are going to be a lot of papers. So I thought I'd make a YouTube video about taking out the papers, but maybe not all of them, because it'll take a long time. But I don't mind how long it takes. I really don't. I quite enjoy taking the papers out and then we'll be able to see the quilt top uh, in all its glory without the stitch marks. Now, another question I get asked is about how I stitch these two hexagons together. And so I've just started this one here. I place the two pieces together like so and do a, a knot stitch at the, at the end and then I think I've counted this before. I think I get about 20 stitches to um, one side of hexagon, something like that. And this, my stitches are very, very close together because I don't want there to be any gaping at all uh, of the hand stitched uh, pieces. Oops, a daisy, got stuck on a pin there. I don't want there to be any gaping at all. So I'm stitching. I get about 20 stitches, I think, to one inch. That's what this is here. And when I get to the end, get to the end, I make sure that I'm taking the stitches right to the very end, do a couple of stitches there, and then a knot. And this is a good way to do a knot, just wrap the cotton three times round your needle. Made a little bloop there, oh, that's okay. And pull that, pull that through so that that's really nice and firm. Now, and I want to show you now how I avoid stitching the paper. I'm sewing with decent quality thread. This is actually Aurifil grey, which is my favourite thing to sew with. And it's double. I, sew, I do a nice decent knot at the end and then what I want to show you closely now is how if you visualise the paper inside here then I'm aiming my needle so that it misses the paper. There's enough of the fold of the fabric for you to just tip that fold on both pieces and you can tell that you're missing the paper altogether. There's the odd time when you might clip the paper and it's not a tragedy, but if you are careful you can feel the two edges of the fold and you can feel that you're nowhere near the papers. And so in theory, when you take the papers out, you could use them again. I am going to have rather a lot of papers when I take this out, aren't I? 
So the next time I film this quilt, I will be taking the papers out because I'll have finished that last little bit that I'm sewing on the end here. But there is one more thing that I wanted to tell you about this quilt. Every time I stick it on the design board here and have a look at it, there was always one hexagon that really caught my eye. It just drew my eye in and, it, oh, and I always thought, oh, it'll be fine, don't worry. But it never was fine. It never was fine and it was right there in the middle of the piece. So I took it out and replaced it with another one. So you can't even see where it is now. But I made a video all about that over on Patreon. And so here are a few little clips from that video uh, to leave you with here. Next time I see you with this quilt, I'll be taking out the papers, which is very exciting because we'll be on the next stage then, which is thinking about the backing for the quilt, uh, any borders that there might be, and how I'm going to quilt it, because I'm going to obviously quilt it by hand, so how I'm going to do that. If you've enjoyed watching this video, give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell then you'll never miss a single video that I post.